What's up everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to use Nessus to automatically detect vulnerabilities in your network and how to generate a report afterwards. Okay, so let's start by installing Nessus. I'm on a freshly installed Kali Linux machine, by the way. Type Nessus download and click the first link you see here, Tenable Nessus download page. You're gonna want to uh, choose your platform in my case, it's gonna be Debian AMD 64. As you can see, there is even Kali Linux mentioned. Uh, version 10.7.4, click download, click agree, and you wanna wait for the .deb package to download. Uh, once it's done, you can open a terminal, click right-click anywhere on your desktop, go to uh, downloads, type ls, you can see the package is there. Maybe let me make it a little bit bigger. Can I make it bigger? Or maybe not. Okay, so dpkg-i uh, nessus uh, to install the package. Okay, we need sudo privileges actually for this. sudo. Type your password. All right, and wait for it to install. It's gonna be super fast as you can see. It's already done. Uh, they tell us to do those two things. You can start Nessus scanner by typing systemctl start Nessus D dot service, then go to this link to configure your scanner. And we're gonna do exactly that. Let me copy this with sudo privileges. Let's run to sudo privileges. All right, you can check if the service is running by, type is, uh, by typing uh, status. As you can see, it's active. So now let's open this link. Click advanced, scroll a little bit down and accept the risk and continue. We can make the window bigger and it is initializing. So please wait while Nessus is initializing. It can take a, a while, not very long, Okay, as you can see, it's already done. Click continue, select register for Nessus Essentials. This is the free version, continue. And here you want to fill this form to get the activation code on your email. Uh, it will be sent to your email. So I'm gonna do that and see you in a second. Okay, so once you get your activation code, just copy it here and click continue uh, and continue. Okay, so just type your username and password. So it's gonna be whatever. It's just, you're just creating an account basically. Something like this, don't save. Startup complete, initializing. And this can take a while. So take a cup of coffee and <laughs> I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so once everything is done installing, uh, let's click new scan and host discovery. You want to give it a name, uh, let's say test, and the range, and let's say the, uh, let's say that I want to scan my network like this, because you can uh, provide the range of IPs, a single IP, a domain, uh, there is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of options here, but let's say I want to discover uh, all the hosts in this uh, subnet, so you can schedule your scan, but we're not gonna do it uh, right now. As you can see, we can set a frequency. We can run it daily, weekly, monthly, uh, however you like. You can even set notifications. You can get notification on your email. Let's go for discovery. I only want, uh, let's say, host enumeration is fine. We're gonna scan. Uh, we're gonna scan the targeted IP later with another type of scan. Uh, report, let's leave it default and advanced, let's leave it default. So let's go back to general, click save here and click run, launch, sorry, click launch. And once this is running, uh, we need to wait for it to finish. Uh, click one more time, new scan. And as you can see, you have uh, three sections sort of you have discovery with this host discovery scan you have vulnerabilities in this section 
you can scan for uh, either single vulnerabilities like log for shell or uh, print nightmare. You can scan uh, specified environments like uh, Active Directory. You can scan web applications. So basically you have uh, a separate scan for each purpose. You can scan for WannaCry uh, ransomware, which is uh, actually uh, it's checking for the Eternal Blue exploit, but it doesn't matter basically. We're gonna go through a uh, web application test. And uh, by the way, as you can see in this compliance section, uh, you have this uh, scans with the label upgrade. This basically means that on the Nessus Essential version that I have, uh, you can't run this. You need the paid version of Nessus. Uh, but anyway, uh, once you uh, install, once you have your Nessus installed, I advise you to just play with the scans, see what you can do. Each of them has a pretty the same uh, structure, like in every scan you have this uh, basic, you have basically, you have to basically fill out a form. So this is, uh, this is pretty easy to set up. But let's see how is our current scan going. You can see we already have some uh, hosts. Dot uh, one to one, this is my main PC. Dot 100, this is our Kali Linux that we are running on. And this dot 39, this seems suspicious. So, of course, I didn't know what is it, but uh, let's, uh, let's uh, visit this, uh, this, uh, this website as it appears. All right, so this is a badstore.net, but uh, actually, what is it? Uh, you can go to Volnet, and Volnet is, uh, sorry, not Volnet, it's called, uh, wait, it's called Volnhub, okay, Volnhub. And uh, Volnhub is a, a website, a, a platform that allows you to download a lot of virtual machines. You can set them up in your virtual box like this. As you can see, I have this vulnerable machine running right now and they basically join your network and you can uh, you can play with them you can try to hack into them uh, so i uh, i'm using the bad store one two three uh, just for the sake of showing you how the scan works so we have this uh, we have this uh, website here we know the host is reachable oh and by the way our scan finished so uh, let me show you, we have no vulnerabilities, we just have uh, info, we have Nessus scan information, you can read, uh, you can read uh, the output from, from the scan regarding every host discovered. Uh, but let's go to my scans one more time, let's create a new scan. It's gonna be a web application test, let's call it a web test. Let's specify a single IP this time, 168039. Let's go to discovery. Let's scan for all ports, not just common ports, because uh, uh, with common ports, uh, it, it's gonna go through the default default ports for services. And if a service run uh, runs on a non-default port, it just will know, it, it won't scan it. So we can't allow ourselves uh, to to commit such a mistake, so to do such a to make such a mistake, so uh, remember to scan for all ports. Assessment. Let's go with scan for all vulnerabilities. Quick. Uh, basically, the more complex the scan, the uh, the more time it will take for the scan to finish. Uh, so keep this in mind. Also, uh, when you scan for all ports, of course, it takes longer to finish the scan. Report. Uh, let's leave it as default and advanced. Um, yeah, let's also leave it as default. Uh, as you can see, there is this credentials tab. Uh, what is it for? It's for you to specify credentials, if you have them, for Nessus to use. So, for example, if there is a, if there is a login form, you can specify credentials and Nessus will try to log in and scan further, you know? So, uh, it allows it to scan the whole web app deeper. Uh, we don't have any credentials. By the way, if you add credentials, you can delete them by clicking this remove button here. We don't have any credentials, so we won't use it. Uh, plugins, this is something 
that uh, allows you to even further customize this scan. You can see we have a web server, web servers uh, category, and here you can choose exactly for what you want to scan. This allows you to optimize the scan. For example, if you have uh, certain information about uh, about the machine, you can exclude some of the plugins, which will uh, result in less time spent by Nessus uh, to scan your to scan your machine. Uh, so it's basically all about optimization, but. What have I done? <laughs> I uh, exited the configuration. Wait, let me do it one more time. Uh, web 192.168.0.39. We went with discovery all ports and we left everything else uh, default. Okay, so click save and click run. And this will take a long time. So just make sure you have running here and see you when it ends. Okay, so as you can see, after a while, we have our results. On this chart right there, you can see how many critical, high, medium, low, and info, uh, basically tiers of danger, sort of, of the vulnerabilities. Uh, you can browse through the folders, for example, here you, here you have uh, all the vulnerabilities cate categorized, some with HTTP, some with OpenSSL, some with Apache. So if you click on Apache, you have a uh, multiple critical critical ones click on the click on this vulnerability and you have description of uh, of what it is the CVE number uh, some resources resources exactly where the vulnerability is present uh, there is no tutorial on how to exploit it but based on this you can just google the vulnerability and uh, see uh, more details so once you have your scan finished, you can go to re to uh, report here. You can now, let's say in PDF format, um, let's go with complete list of uh, vulnerabilities by host, or maybe not. Maybe, uh, yeah, complete, let's go with complete list of vulnerability by, by host, but you basically can uh, can uh, can select detail of vulnerabilities by host by plugin vulnerabilities operations some options uh, let's go with generate report and after a minute or so or so you can see that uh, it was downloaded and displayed so what do we have here we have only one host so there is <laughs> only uh, only one entry in this table sort of here. Let's scroll down. Uh, you have all the vulnerabilities listed here, sorted by the severity, and you have their score in those two, uh, those two formats, sort of. Uh, exactly which plugin it corresponds to, the name of the plugin, so this is like a plugin ID, so you have all this listed here. By the way, I think that if you click on this plugin, you are brought to, yeah, to its description on the Tenable website, so this is pretty cool. So let's say I want to know what this means, so I click here, and it will link me to this, uh, yeah, very, uh, maybe not very detailed, but yeah, detailed description, and then I can do my research from there. Uh, what else? Yeah, this is the end, basically. So. Uh, you will, if you have uh, in real world, you will probably have multiple hosts, so it would generate you this uh, this report that you can then uh, modify or basically uh, handle to someone that is uh, responsible to, for dealing with uh, dealing with uh, with this kind of results, right? And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you want more tutorials regarding any other security tools, just let me know in the comments. And as always, see you soon.